My name is Carson. Welcome to Thrifty Garage, a channel where we do everyday repairs, how-tos, and reviews. And in today's video, we're going to be taking a look at three different types of ground protection mats. Here we've got the Workhorse ground protection mats. Here we've got plywood. This is actually OSB, but uh, the plywood's on the bottom of my stack, so you can probably tell where that comes out on a priority list of what's most important to me. Um, so this is just for an example. We're talking about plywood there. And then here we've got the Alterna mats or the Great Mats is another brand that does the same similar type of option. So for those that are new to the channel, I'm a landscape contractor and uh, we do a lot of landscape construction and we use ground protection mats to prevent damage to existing turf and lawn as we're moving into like a backyard, for example, doing work in the backyard, we're uh, maintaining the aesthetic of the front yard and want to try and reduce uh, cost and having to repair that area. So ground protection mats are a great way to do that. Uh, in the industry, um, kind of your beginner starter level, it's going to be a plywood option. I have tried OSB in the past and don't do OSB. It's a little bit cheaper than plywood, maybe 50% of the cost, maybe 75% of the cost. Not worth it. This stuff does not last even a quarter of the time that plywood does. And plywood doesn't last even a quarter of the time these other options do. So plywood, um, good starter level cost-wise, but it's definitely something that you, it's kind of a throwaway product. You use it for maybe a year, maybe a couple if you're lucky, and then you gotta throw it away. The biggest problem with plywood, that these other two don't face, is it gets water in it, it starts breaking down, and uh, it starts uh, falling apart, and then you just have to throw it away. It's just garbage. Um, here we've got the great mat, and uh, this is actually a three by eight sheet. When I bought these, I went with a three by eight sheet, one for weight, but also for cost. So I save a little bit of money by doing that and I just plan on running them lengthwise. And we'll, we'll pull this out here for you. So you can see that I guess. So there's the, the full sheet. It's a couple feet taller than me. So uh, great option. This does have the diamond plate on both front and back. A lot of people question what you should do on that. Um, I, it's always worked great for me, especially in a lawn application. We have good traction with the equipment on one side. We have good traction on the lawn on the back side. No slipping or sliding for the most part. I will say with plywood and the great mats, if you are turning on this stuff, the, the mats do start to spin on you and that can be a problem. And that's one thing that the workhorse ground protection mats don't have. Those ones interlock together. So we got a lot of uh, different options here, pros and cons. Really cost wise, um, these two options you're gonna be looking at about the same cost. And as far as a quantity, you're gonna be wanting, uh, oh, I think we've got, 10 of these, and that's kind of the bare minimum. I think we've got 12 of those, and that's probably a little bit less than what I'd recommend bare minimum on those. We probably want to recommend more like, uh, you know, 14, 16 of those. Same thing with plywood. I think I have uh, uh, a dozen or more, probably 15 or 18 uh, plywood sheets that I use, uh, like I said, not as regularly anymore, but I used to use pretty regularly. Okay, I think we're kind of getting off tangent here. So, what, what would I want to know if, if I was looking into this? Um, one thing's weight. Like I said, I went with a three foot width for weight reduction. These are still kind of a pretty uh, bulky material. Both plywood and these great mats are pretty heavy. It's much more convenient if you've got two guys to move it. Like I said, I don't always have, uh, I think I said that on my uh, workhorse video, I don't always have two guys to move these around. So having the ability to move about with one person is really nice. And that's where these workhorse mats really work well. So you can, one, one man can lift these, you don't move them around, but they're, they're definitely, Pretty pretty heavy. Um, with the plywood, it kind of depends on what thickness you go with. Um, I usually just look kind of at the price point and see. Um, usually we're greater than a half an inch. Anything less than that, you're going to be blown out. But these uh, workhorse mats are uh, prob probably half the weight. I would probably pick these up um, two mats at a time, um, whereas I can only do one of these at a time. And with that, you've got some, some strength differences too. So one thing that makes these light is the back side of these has kind of a, a grid put in there. And that grid helps reduce weight, but it also takes away from the strength. So you kind of have to weigh your pros and cons on that. Um, check out my separate workhorse video. If you're interested in this one specifically, I'd probably go into more detail, lay out some more of the pros and cons. Another pro to this workhorse mat is it's got all these air holes in here. That makes a huge difference. When you're laying down plywood or these great mats, you have to leave um, the ability for air to go through them. So you want to lift these up at the end of the day. Every single day you're gonna have to lift these up, let the 
ground air out and then put them back down the next day. This type of mat, you don't have to do that. You can lay them out and you're just good to go. So I would definitely, um, if you're gonna be on a job long term, and don't wanna have to pick them up. The other thing too with these, like I said, with these, you can't really turn on the mats. But with these ones, because they lock together, you're able to drive the skid steer on them and turn around if you're in a track piece of equipment. And because of that grid on the back kind of locks to the ground and because they're all locked together, really nice, maneuverable. Uh, these are actually really easy to lock together and it's a pretty, uh, a pretty secure lockment system. So there you go. You got really easy to lock these together. It is a little bit easier when you walk around with the hammer. Um, those lock in to each tab. They've got little um, male and female parts that lock together on all of them. And you can split these panels in half. So you can, which is really nice for, for me on this last shot we were on, we were kind of going on a little bit of a curve. And so I was able to just take a half panel and add it and scoot the, the channel a little bit at a time. Whereas these bigger sheets, you kind of have to, you know, move it a four foot section at a time so you can end up wasting a little bit of material. So cost on these, I would plan on spending at least three or $4,000. When you're budgeting, you, know, you might spend $1,000 for plywood sheets. You're gonna spend probably three or $4,000 for the same quantity of these other ones, but these are gonna last much, much longer. You might only get three or six months out of these plywood sheets you're gonna get five, 10 years out of these bigger ones. Um, these are not as durable. You're not gonna put them through as rough conditions. Um, if you got an air gap that you're trying to, to bridge, um, much like plywood, these are not really suited for that. Um, we had a big rock um, go through this guy um, when the equip piece of equipment pushed on it. So say, same type of thing I would say. I would say these are more durable than plywood, but not quite as durable as these big uh, sheets. And, and it makes sense. These, these are both a poly product, and this is just a solid poly product. Uh, which is why it's so much heavier. Um, if you're looking for like an event um, where you're having a lot of foot traffic or even vehicle traffic on a, a you know, stadium field or whatever it is, uh, these are a great option. They do leave a little bit of uh, the grid behind underneath, but I just kind of look at that as some aeration. Um, it, it's really gonna level itself out as time goes on, so that's not a big deal um, unless you're talking about a really pristine piece of lawn. And another thing you could do too, um, that workhorse, uh, the salesman recommended, is actually laying down a geotextile fabric. And uh, that would work well with any of these, but I think it would work really well with this. Uh, if you have really soupy conditions and you need a little bit more flotation, putting down um, some geogrid fabric across the, you know, a woven geotextile fabric would really kind of help spread the weight and it wouldn't sink in as much. Um, so that's a great option with these two. Really kind of cool and unique tip. Um, now, if you had, if I had to decide one of these, what to buy, um, like I said, plywood, it's out. It was great for my business when I first started, when I didn't have as much capital to, to spend three or $4,000 on a you know, kind of a starter kit. Um, that, that's the bottom of my list as far as what I would choose. When you're starting, you kind of, you gotta start. Oh, if I had only one to choose from, it's really a hard toss up for the workhorse versus the great mats. I just, I just don't know if I can really pin down which one, which one would be my favorite. It really depends. It's really job specific. And the nice thing is I have a, a, a decent amount of each now. And so I can really choose a job case by case what I would do. And I would even mix and match these on a job. Like right now we're on a job where we're coming off the driveway um, onto the side of the house and then we're turning and then running down a straight way down through the gate. And that job, I, I would use these and I would put that whole grid right by the corner of the garage so we can get around the corner and turn. And then I would run these, these uh, longer mats straight out so it would give me the ability to turn but also give me more distance with these. Um, I think if I was doing more heavy applications than what I am, um, I would probably do the great mats because it's, I think it's just more of a bulletproof product, even though it's a little bit more cumbersome and it has some disadvantages, like it doesn't have the air pockets. Um, if I had to choose one, considering the fact that we need to be able to lift it with one guy and easy to move it around maneuverability and the ability to just set it down and leave it for an extended period of time, I honestly would probably go with the workhorse for that reason. Again, kind of looking at your application level, if you're on that extreme, application level, I would say you gotta go with a more uh, a hardcore uh, option. But if you're kind of in the middle there where you, you need to protect the ground and you're needing to kind of not have 
the ground protection mats kind of consume your whole job. I mean, these things get pretty, you know, you're ended up spending 15 minutes at the beginning of the day, 15 minutes at the end of the day. It really starts to add up. So your cost savings, I think, are, are much bigger on these. So if I had to choose, I'd probably go with, with the workhorse, honestly. I hate to decide, you know, just decide one. I think it depends on your application. Let me know in the comments down below what, uh, what you use or what you would choose based off this video, um, based on your application. Let us know your, comp your application in the comments. I'd um, love to hear what everyone else is using. Uh, any other tips and feedback, like the geotextile fabric, any other uh, tips and tricks that people have learned, please share it in the comments down below for everyone watching this video. And I, I think that's everything. So, uh, and I forgot to share. Let's talk about the dimensions on this guy right here. So this guy is a four foot by three and a half foot in size. And the reason they did that is so you can have some maneuverability. If you're putting it into a box truck and you need it to only be seven foot width, you can turn them on the three and a half foot side, put two together, and it's a lot narrower. Um, and it also gives you just some, a little bit of versatility, just a half inch difference, or six, a half a foot difference in your direction, whatever you need based on your job to make it fit. You know, maybe like I said, you're going into a stadium, you need to fit it through a, a gate or a doorway, and that will work out for you. Uh, lots of options on that. So, I mean, your typical poly sheet or plywood, you're gonna be four foot by eight foot. There are custom sizes on the polys. I think you go down to two foot. I wanted the three foot for uh, flotation purposes, but I, I went down to the three foot for cost and weight savings. Um, right, is there a right or wrong? I don't know. Um, I do like the smallness of these. They're easier to move around and a pallet takes a lot less space. These get pretty big on my trailer. It's harder to run my piece of equipment with this if I have any attachments. Um, whereas this takes up a lot less space, you can kind of push into a corner of my equipment trailer and work there. So space-wise, a couple different options there as well. Thanks for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe. And we'll see you on the next one. Thanks for watching Thrifty Garage. My name is Carson. Welcome to Thrifty Garage, a channel where we do everyday repairs, how-tos, and reviews. And in today's video, we're going to... Here we've got the workhorse. Brake mats, workhorse. Let's try that again.